Here we are, the first major tuning pass of the year for Modern Warfare. Late last night at around 3.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, update 1.07 went live across the board for the game. It was roughly 8.5 gigabytes in size, and with it came a ton of things including fixes, adjustments, and tuning, as well as new content, all of which, well, naturally we're going to break down here in this video. So sit back, relax, and take it in so that you know everything that really changed with this update. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below if there's anything that you're a huge fan of that got updated, if there's anything that you were hoping for changed but didn't see, and anything in between. And also, do be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with the daily happenings in the COD world. Anyways, let's jump into the changes. Firstly, probably the biggest two key takeaways here out of this are that we got two brand new maps within Modern Warfare, Shoot House and Krovnik Farmland. Shoot House is a 6v6 map, Krovnik Farmland a ground war map. Earlier today, these maps actually weren't in the rotation. Like we talked about, this update went live around 3.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it was up for quite some time. Players probably wondering where the maps were, but as the time of this video going live, it should be out there now where both maps are playable and in the wild. But it was something that you couldn't find them, and so it might have thrown some people off. Shoot House was available in private match. So you could go in, play against bots, or just check it out for yourself and do a walkthrough. But as for the maps themselves, let's start with Shoot House. For Shoot House, it's a small three-lane map that has a couple of different flanking routes. It has a couple of places that are high ground, but overall, it's definitely one where you'll see a lot of SMG and shotgun play flourish. I've seen a lot of talk about the 725. I played about three matches right whenever this launched and then didn't see the 725 in those matches, so I probably just got lucky. But it is something that overall, from the couple of games that I played, I'm interested in playing more. I would definitely play this 24-7 playlist that's live right now when I want to take a break from Ground War. It's nice to be in the action almost immediately, though. Sometimes that will result in your immediate death because, well, spawn kills are a thing in this game. But overall, I think it's a nice little addition here and also adding to that list of six 6v6 maps that isn't all that big, I'm certainly all for. As for Kronvik Farmland, this one is really interesting to me. I think that this is definitely going to be best if you play with a squad. If you end up playing one or two players in Ground War and just filling a party, you can do well, but you might have to get lucky with your team because the way this works, it's a very linear map. It is very much so like a tug of war in which whoever controls those most flags past the midpoint of the map you're going to absolutely annihilate players. Though, truth be told, streaks can absolutely be a key changing factor within the flow of the game and who has the control. I know that Zach and I ended up getting a couple of streaks in the one gameplay you're probably seeing in the background, and we turned our game around. Though we couldn't win it, we ended up holding the entire map positioning for the rest of the match. But overall, it's pretty big. It's five flag domination. It's a sniper's haven for sure. The two left wings are absolutely sniper's favorite places to hang out. But if you end up sticking to middle or somewhat closer to middle in terms of that length, then you'll be able to pull off some nice gunplay with the rifles and SMGs in the game as well. Really enjoyed this one so far. Gonna be looking to play some more once we jump back into it later tonight. Now, while we have two maps that may have accounted for a large portion of that 8.5 gigabytes, that is definitely nowhere near the extent of everything that we got. We have a ton to talk about still in terms of tunings, adjustments, and different changes. So let's jump into that kind of stuff. First up, let's jump into the weapons tunings. That's probably the most important to you in your everyday gameplay because, well, it affects what you use in game mostly, your weapons. I'm sure that the adjustment that everybody was anticipating was that of one to the 725. Now this shotgun of course was notorious for its range and that actually got a reduction in that damage range. And on top of that it also got an increase to the ADS as well as the hip fire spread. So your shots won't be as accurate of course if you do have those slug rounds that will come down to your accuracy but the overall base 725 had an increase to that ADS and hip fire spread. But that's about on par with what I thought they'd do with this and then jumping over another huge meta weapon was that of the M4A1. This had a reduction in its damage range, so it doesn't do as much damage over distance, and then also it had a small recoil increase. Additionally, for all assault rifles, it increased the hip fire spread to reduce the effectiveness in close quarters, which since we are still so early on within this update, it's kind of hard to get a full grasp on the scope of how much of a change this was, but over the course of the next day or two, you'll definitely be able to recognize how much of a change it may be compared to where it was. But 
Interesting that that was taken into account for all rifles. It also for all rifles lessened the damage at long range for full auto 556 ammunition weapons. To my knowledge, off the top of my head, that's all the base rifles, minus the AK, which is a 762 weapon, and as well, pending no modifications like the 458 SOCOM rounds in the M4, the 300 blackout rounds in the M13, and the 545 rounds for the AK. Talking weapon classification a little further, SMGs overall got an increase to movement speed, an increase to the ADS move speed, as well as small reductions to the sprint out time, which does make it better. So it's an overall buff to the entire SMG category, so it's going to be interesting to see how the meta shifts if it does it all over these coming days. In terms of SMG specific changes though, the Uzi ended up having an increase to its damage range. Then we saw some adjustments to the LMGs. The MG43 ended up having an increase to its hip fire spread. The damage range was reduced and it had a small ADS slowdown on that weapon as well. The M91 ended up having an increased hip fire spread as well as a small damage reduction at range. The PKM ended up having an increased hip fire spread and of course a medium damage reduction as well in its range just like the M91. As for pistols, we ended up seeing this again, another weapon classification adjustment. We saw an increase to the movement speed with pistols, a reduction in the sprint out time, and an increase to the damage range. So again, an overall buff to pistols as well. Now, the two curious parts to me were these next two changes. We saw one that ended up changing how crouch and prone recoil work. Crouch and prone no longer adjusts recoil values meaning that previously you'd end up being able to go into prone or just a crouch position, and it would mitigate a lot of the recoil that you would naturally experience with whatever weapon you were using. That is no longer the case. In fact, there is absolutely no mitigation for recoil as it seems so far through my testing, and what you'll see on screen is some examples of that with the M4. There is absolutely no difference between standing and crouching now it seems, which is really weird to me, given that that is an actual real life technique in terms of giving yourself more stability with a weapon. I don't really understand this one. The only thing that I could understand is maybe it's trying to discourage camping a little bit because usually you'll be crouching in a corner if you're someone who plays the long camp game, not somebody that just drops to crouch to end up mitigating their recoil during shots and in a gunfight. But that's a really curious one. Same thing goes for the mounting as well. This ended up adding a slight increase to the recoil while mounting, which again is something that while it was kind of crazy to think about, you could just drop into a mount immediately and have zero recoil. It's kind of the whole purpose of mounting to brace yourself and to mitigate as much recoil as possible. So those are some interesting changes here with that one, but that's going to round out the weapon tuning within this update. Other tuning pass items outside of weaponry deal with claymores, everybody's favorite explosive right now. Detonating the enemy claymore with rounds from your weapon is now non-lethal when you are at full HP. So you should be able to survive that. And as well, the trigger and damage radius was also reduced on top of the damage width to better match the trigger with that was reduced as well. So sort of directly correlated change to both of those. And that's a big change despite there not being a whole ton of wording associated with this one. That means that the diffuse is a lot safer now for players, and that also means that the effective range and peripherals of the claymores aren't as deadly. So to me, that's a win so far. Then we have EOD getting a little bit of a buff as well. This now clamps damage to a non-lethal amount, assuming the player is at full health, meaning that following up that claymore statement, you shouldn't die in one hit to claymores and such with EOD active. Then we end up seeing that Riot Shields had a slight adjustment here to it, which I guess technically falls back into the weapon category, but I wanted to talk about this one because it's not a projectile weapon. This one though, there was an issue where if you had a throwing knife or a thermite grenade, you could throw it and the shield wouldn't move from in front of your person, which naturally that's a huge advantage for the player using the riot shield at that point, and that's since been changed. Now if you have a throwing knife or a thermite grenade, you'll see the shield transition to your back momentarily, meaning that you'll be vulnerable from the front for that duration of said throw or said animation of having it in your hands at all. Whether you hold it there, that's up to you. Then in terms of gameplay adjustments outside of this stuff, we end up seeing that sprint and tactical sprint speeds are now back to the same speeds that they were in the beta. Truthfully, I'm kind of surprised that they made them slower after the beta to when we have them now at launch and up until this point, but I had that sneaking suspicion that they did because it just felt ever so slightly a bit slower 
and it turns out that was actually the case. If you check out some of the footage on screen right now, you'll see that we're comparing pre-patch and post-patch sprinting. Now, thank the COD gods that I just randomly tested sprinting one day about a week ago or so, but my one downfall is that both of these clips, because the original source had it, I matched it, both clips have double time on, which increases that duration of the tactical double sprint. So are these the 100% base sprint speeds compared? Unfortunately, no, but it does illustrate the same comparable results, just with a little bit longer lasting extra sprint at the beginning, which would add maybe about a half second to a second in the grand total of these results. But what you'll see is that there's about a half second differential between pre-patch and post-patch. And while you may not notice it initially at first, you may, if you're running longer distances, say in ground war, be able to notice it rather easily in game just at first glance and feel because over time, that differential will start to add up. Then we saw some adjustments to the challenges overall, the progression-based ones, and rank-based progression challenges as well. The daily challenges and active missions are getting a full sweep of testing and fixes. Some were currently adjusted, others may not be, but are going to be updated as soon as possible. But we ended up seeing listed a fix for the infiltrator challenge not tracking properly. That's been a long-standing one. We saw a fix for launchers not giving XP when shooting down killstreaks. We saw a fix for a bug where planting or defusing five bombs in cyber attack or search and destroy was not tracking properly. We saw a fix for a bug where your XP required to reach the next rank was higher than the value needed. And then we saw an adjustment for the camo challenge of kills after reloading. That didn't give players enough time to get the kills, so what they did was they added more time on. So this one's actually huge. If you saw my video about how to get more kills after reloading, we did some testing and found out that we had from reload completion about one to three seconds to secure the kill, meaning that plus 100 or whatever that would pop up on your screen after you actually got the kill. But with this change, that likely added another second or two, maybe even three, perhaps bringing it up to an even five seconds after you reload and put that magazine back in, which is absolutely massive. I'll keep you posted likely on Twitter if that's the case for now for follow-up analysis, but right now my camo challenges are still bugged and I don't see individual tracking numbers, so I can't tell exactly when I get a kill after reloading, what tracks, and what doesn't. Now we get into the more technical stuff here, the things that you might not notice too much, but were definitely changed. We saw, firstly, footsteps. This is something they said they increased the occlusion percentage to filter footsteps behind geometry and adjusted the footstep volume at a distance. They also said they have another large footsteps change coming in the next update, which will adjust the crouch and ADS movement significantly to make it quieter, so that's something we should stay tuned for. Cyber Attack ended up having an adjustment where it would end up fixing a bug where players would lose their primary weapon and would be unable to see their view model after being revived. Ground War ended up having a couple of bugs fixed where the players would sometimes be unable to pick a spawn location and also fix the bug with that tack insert that would spawn you behind enemy territory and behind enemy lines, so you literally were out of bounds and just would immediately die on top of the fact that they would watch you spawn. So you're kind of screwed no matter which way you put it there, but that was fixed out. Then we saw some adjustment with the lighting that continued to update the player visibility and dark windows and dark areas. Personally, I haven't seen too much in terms of experiencing this for myself just yet. I don't know exactly where this was implemented, if it was a global thing or what may come of that, but we also saw that battle chatter was something that it removed the ability for enemies to hear when they've been called out by the opposing team, which is absolutely huge. They also adjusted enemy callouts so that they are never from your operator. Enemy callouts now use a more restricted cone at the hip and even more restricted in ADS when calculating whether or not to trigger or to call out. So they said they'll continue to monitor this stuff and tweak battle chatter as the game progresses, but then we also see a ton of back-end fixes for stability to combat crashes and improve its stability. We saw bugs with streaks and field upgrades being flown out of bounds without penalty. We saw fixes for bugs where players would be killed by an enemy with variable zoom, but they wouldn't see the zoom function. They fixed the Semtex warning audio. They ended up adding in a fix where in headquarters players could use attack insert to respawn when their team owned the point, which you're not allowed to do normally. They fixed various collision issues. They added a UI that shows XP events in the playlist and the active playlist. There was a bug fix for the progress of bomb defusal. There was a bug fix that revealed players to UAVs when they fired their weapons, even if they had ghosts and silencer equipped. And there was a fix in the issues if multiple personal radars were active on a team, both marked the same enemy 
enemy, only one though would be seen by the enemy minimap. The final thing we'll touch on real quickly here before we wrap up this video is the fact that there were a boatload of spec ops changes. What you'll see on screen right now, of course, is the full patch notes and everything that comes along with said spec ops changes. But right now, it's a little too early to tell. Again, we're still too early on to accurately gauge what this may mean for the longevity of spec ops. But realistically, spec ops was kind of a mess whenever we first saw it with launch and Hopefully this fixed out a lot of the long-standing issues, but we'll have to wait and see again just how playable it is now compared to where it was yesterday. So with that said though, that is where we're gonna wrap it up. That is everything that changed here with this update. There was a lot, and it was our first major title update of this game and first tuning pass that we've seen so far. So let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. Is there anything in particular that you guys really liked here out of this? Anything that you didn't really like, whatever it may be, feel free to let me know your thoughts. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you found it insightful. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things modern warfare, updates, news, information, tips, tricks, all that good stuff. We got you covered here on the channel so if any of that interests you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing if you guys also want to follow me over on twitter and instagram those are the best places to get connected outside of youtube practically live on both those if you guys want to share a conversation ask me a question whatever it may be that link is down there in the description below that said thanks so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you guys later take care and peace